Hi, my name is P3, working at Hyundai Motor Company. In this talk, I'm going to introduce Guider Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer and explain how to uh, analyze automotive infotainment system using it. This is a summary for my talk. First, talking about performance analysis and optimization. Next, introducing Guider and its useful features. And next, uh, explaining how to analyze automotive infotainment system using it. Uh, finally, showing demo how to use Guider. Software development eventually led to code changes. Uh, changed code introduces uh, new bugs and makes working code meaningless, uh, causes unnecessary communication between tasks, and requires new optimizations. Uh, for new platform development and continuous update, we constantly create, change, and delete code, but we are not very sensitive to the performance degradation caused by the change. And if these changes are accumulated, the code is modified very uh, significantly to improve the uh, deteriorate performance. It's a uh, vicious cycle that repeats. Therefore, we always need to manage, analyze, and improve performance more systematically. Let's talk about performance factors. Uh, first of all, the major performance factor is CPU. Uh, there are many reasons make your system slow, such like CPU intensive job, frequently context switching, uh, very uh, busy way task, and so on. If your system is slowing down, the first thing to do is watching total CPU uses and uh, which tasks are using CPU cores. Memory is also important. Frequent memory allocation and deallocation jobs will consume CPU more than expected. And inefficient allocation and missing deallocation such like leaks can cause the, the out of memory, then system will be slow seriously. In worst case, it will restart finally. To free our memory, Linux kernel tried to flush file caches, uh, swap pages out. It called the reclaim. Once reclaim start, the system will slowly start to slow down. Next one is I/O. Generally, block device is the slowest in our system. So optimizations such like caching, preloading, uh, completion. Uh, workload tuning is required. Especially unnecessary I.O. operations uh, should be removed and continuous operations must be merged. Last one is the communication. Lock, it's very important to prevent data corruption shared between multiple tasks, but it can have a huge impact on performance. Excessive lock contention increases CPU uses and also response time. Moreover, uh, performance can be worse depending on lock attributes such like priority inheritance protocol, uh, busy uh, wake up strong in Futex. IPC, in the modern system, all services generate remote procedure call using system bursts such like DBUS to operate in, in complex relationship with each other. But this RPC may uh, cause system overhead, such like context switching, serialization, memory copy. In particular, broadcasting calls greatly increases the system load and response time. IRQ, especially uh, software interrupts called bottom heart, can affect system response time. Network drivers are typical so it has many performance tuning options between CPU uses and response time. It's about trade-off. Uh, in addition to these factors I described, there are many other performance factors. Most importantly, we need to be able to uh, recognize each performance factor and measure its actual impact. Yes, we need to think about how to measure them. Logging and using tools are the most effective way to analyze performance. 
logging is bad use for, for recording specific information, but understanding log requires domain specific knowledge. So system level engineers or new members are difficult to understand them usually. In addition, adding new logs requires some source code and tool chain for rebuild. It's very boring and time consuming. It's also difficult to record and analyze too many logs because of the limitation for memory and our time. So we prefer to use performance tools. It's very comfortable and effective to analyze performance at system level. Some nice tools uh, doesn't even require rebuilding target program uh, installing itself with dependent packages, restarting target task. But sometimes too many tools confuse us. Determining the right tool from a variety of performance issues is not easy. So I introduced Guider Unified Runtime Performance Analyzer. It can uh, monitor, profile, trace, visualize various performance factors. Monitoring features provide continuous performance stats every interval in real time. Profiling features provide a statistic overview of collected data during a specific interval. Tracing features provide specific data on the execution of the task in the form of logs. Guider is a kind of client command line interface tool. So it offers a lot of features by the combination of commands and options. But in this talk, I will try to explain only some useful features and tracing features about it uh, because of the time limitation. It's open source program and written in Python. It doesn't require uh, installation, but PIP and OE, uh, Yocto LSP, also supported for your convenience. Actually, uh, just executing guider.py file is enough. Guider never use external binaries, such like executable programs. Uh, packages except for Matplot a library for some kind of visualization features. Most of Guider features are implemented directly using standard libraries, such like libc. Uh, that's the reason why Guider doesn't uh, require rebuild, install, uh, configuration. In addition, it can be applied with only one megabyte of storage space. These characteristics are very attractive in embedded system, especially. All features of Guider are supported in Linux and Android, and it also provides some limited features on Mac OS and Windows. So from now, let me introduce some current features of Guider. First one is monitoring system resources in real time. Uh, this feature works by periodically updating states for system resource and events. System resources of a CPU, memory swap, uh, block, uh, network, storage. As shown in the picture, in the first part, system resource information is shown on the top line, such as the number of cores, uh, RAM, and swap. And additional system information such as context switching, interrupt, running task, memory zone, and performance stats using PMU are also displayed. In the second part, important system level resources and events are printed. System states such as CPU uses, available memory, swap uses, uh, memory decline, block IO, network IO are also precious information for performance analysis. In addition, uh, per core usages are uh, also printed. Although not shown in this picture, uh, governor, clock, temperature for each core can be shown together using specific options. In the third part, storage information about busy workload available space is shown for each device. Heavy storage workload can cause serious performance degradation that's the reason why we check those stats. In the upper part of the picture, network information about inbound and outbound is shown for each device. 
In the lower part of the picture, not only system resources, but also task resources are shown with their attributes in real time. It's a little bit similar to uh, Linux top command, usages for CPU, virtual physical shared memory, swap, block IO, and memory details are printed well. The shown tasks are sorted by CPU uses by default, but you can change the sort order uh, using a specific option. The task filter is also available to show only specific tasks. All or specific function calls are uh, monitored for a specific task in real time. In addition, tasks about function calls are also printed such as average, minimum, maximum time. At this picture, all function calls are shown with backtrace. Uh, that usage is not about CPU, it's the proportion for the total function calls. So this picture is useful uh, when finding frequent calls or measuring specific function call count, including backtrace. Of course, uh, there is another function monitor feature to measure CPU intensive function calls by sampling techniques. Uh, the task filter and function filter are also supported. All system calls, including backtrace, are also monitored for specific tasks in real time. In addition, these calls tests are also shown, uh, such as elapsed time, uh, error return together. This feature is very useful when finding these calls that take a long time, uh, measuring specific Cisco count. Uh, checking Cisco error returns. Uh, the task filter and Cisco filter are also supported. All open the files, uh, sockets, pipes are monitored for each process in real time. Uh, files are printed with position and open flag. TCP and UDP sockets are printed with uh, binding and connection status. Unix domain sockets are also printed with the file paths. This kind of information is very precious when debugging issues or performance tracing. The process filter and the file filter are also available. By using the file filter, monitoring all processes that open uh, specific files or binding specific sockets is possible. Precious monitoring features are for checking current status, but if someone wants to uh, see a summary of system changes for a long time, the profiling features can be good solutions. As shown in the picture in the top table, changes for system resources and events are printed for each interval. CPU uses available memory, uh, block IO, uh, swap uses, memory claim size, uh, running task, Network uses are uh, summarized in each line for each interval. Because of screen length limitation, some fields uh, were truncated. In the middle table, changes for storage uses are uh, displayed with total summary. Uh, there was no storage operation in the profiling time. Uh, busy workload size, available space are uh, summarized for each time interval for each device. In the bottom table, changes for network uses are printed with total summary in the red box. Workload for inbound and outbound is summarized for each time interval for each device. Next profiling features are for tasks. In the first table, changes for per process CPU uses are shown with task attributes and uh, total summary for each interval. Total summary information in the red box represents CPU usages such as minimum, uh, average, maximum, and total for the, each task and whole system. In the second table, changes for per process virtual memory uses are printed with task attributes and total summary for each interval. Uh, the overall format is similar to the CPU table above. Although not shown in this picture, uh, various types of tables are reported together, such like scheduling delay, physical memory, uh, block IO, C group uses. 
by using these features, measuring and comparing resource uses uh, possible for uh, various test cases. Next feature is for uh, comparing performance between uh, different versions of software. This feature makes it easy to analyze changes in resources such as CPU, uh, GPU, and memory uh, due to version changes. Each resource is largely divided into system and task unit uses, and resource usage statistics are provided in mean, uh, average, max, and total. Text-based analysis is specific but less readable. Uh, that's why Guider provides visualization features in SVG format. Using the SVG format output in your web browser, it provides an uh, easy to view the responsive uh, interface. First visualization feature is about resource graph. As shown in the picture, uh, the top box shows graphs of CPU uses for processes. The box on the right side is the label list for the CPU graphs. The middle box shows graphs or block and uh, network IR for the whole system. The bottom box shows graphs of memory uh, for the whole system. Uh, of course, process graphs about block network memory resources are also available. In addition, filter option for all of them is also supported. As show, as you can see, this visualization feature makes it easy to understand big data collected for a long time. And it also helps to uh, understand trends in resource uses. This is also good for communication with other people. Next visualization feature is about scheduling. Uh, the scheduling data is very large and very difficult to analyze one by one. Therefore, as shown in the picture, scheduling data such as time slice, preemption, and blocking should be visualized prior to a detailed analysis. Using SVG format output in your web browser, you can view details for time slices. It's, difficult, it's very effective for uh, analyzing multi-threaded programs interactive services, uh, delayed tasks, core utilization. In addition, this feature also allows for scheduling events as well as other custom events having uh, timestamps for start and end. Last visualization feature is about course text. Analyzing uh, only last called functions without whole course text is difficult because uh, standard functions such like read and write can be called be by any other functions. Above all, uh, in most cases, last called functions will not cause all the problems. The problem is likely some other functions that called those last functions. Therefore, to analyze uh, performance problems in function level, we need to be able to see the, the whole, including uh, each core stack. In this case, uh, this prime graph feature is very useful to analyze core stack based profiling result for CPU uses, blocking status, memory leak, uh, syscall trigger, uh, function core. As shown in the picture, last functions at the bottom of uh, each stack are various, so we need to analyze upper functions that contains them. I guess modifying those functions will improve your application or service performance, actually. Opening the, uh, opening the SBZ format output in your web browser, highlighting, uh, zooming, uh, searching, uh, specific functions or stacks are also available using mouse and keyboard. Okay, so far I have introduced some useful features of Guider. Uh, from now on, I would like to explain tracing features. Because of uh, time limitation, I'm going to explain only function tracing, uh, signal tracing, and IO tracing. The target of function tracing is divided into three kinds of things. 
first native calls such as C, Rust, and Go language. Uh, second, Python calls using interpreter, uh, last system calls. Uh, signal tracing is uh, well, signals delivered to the uh, target. IO tracing is about IO operations at various levels, such like device, uh, task, and file. Tracing target is divided into program and task. Program is uh, binary, not yet executed from storage, so guider can execute the target program at which point the tracing begins from loaders. This is, uh, yeah, task is a running thread. Guider does not require restart of the running task for tracing. Instead, it attached to the running target thread directly. Tracing commands are various. So if you want to see detailed commands and options, please refer to guider help more. The first tracing feature is for native functions such as C, C++, Rust, and Go language. Native function tracing is started by bitrace command. The command is implemented using backtrace called trap. Backtrace is for all symbol addresses from ERF and drop sections are injected to the target task's virtual memory by guider itself. So guider can uh, detect events for function call and function return from their target task by ptrace. Guider can even read and manipulate registers and uh, memory for the target task when uh, function events occur. As shown in the picture, call states are shown with various depth for Go program in real time, arguments and binary a uh, binary name for each function are also printed together in a line. Uh, the G option in the command line is task filter. That means all tasks have name including Go will be targets for function tracing. The H option means printing backtraces. If there was no H option in the command line, just all function calls are printed uh, without depth. Function filter is also available for, uh, with the C option to trace only specific functions. The C option supports specific characters such like asterisk for inclusion or circumflex for exclusion. Using the H option, all backtrace uh, are also printed with, uh, when the target function is called. As I already mentioned, guider can read and uh, manipulate registers and memory for the target task at the time of each event. In addition, various features such like task control, injection for Python code, and external binary remote call are also available using call command. As shown in the picture on the right side, many call commands are supported to handle specific function call events. Let me explain some call commands. Uh, execute, execute the external command when function called, filter, uh, print context if only specific conditions are met, get erg, print specific argument value, set erg, manipulate specific argument value, uh, get return, uh, print return value and elapse the time when function return, py5, execute specific Python script remotely, read mem, uh, print specific memory value, write mem, manipulate specific uh, memory value, sleep, wait for specific seconds, syscall, call specific syscall remotely, user call, call specific user level call remotely. This kind of call commands are very useful when analyzing more deeply. This is about how to use call commands. Uh, call commands are appended to the function filter with vertical bar uh, in the C option. Uh, the command line at the picture means, first, start tracing only a right function from yes ABCD command. 
as you know, ES is just a Linux command that prints arguments value infinitely. So yes, A, B, C, D command will uh, print A, B, C, D string repeatedly. And print function is implemented internally uh, by the right function in libc. Next, when the uh, right function is called, print, print the memory value pointed uh, to by the first argument with backtrace. Argument number starts from zero in guider. Therefore, function argument for uh, the right function is specific memory address that point to the value a, b, c, d to be written. I guess the yes program is implemented using buffer write because multiple a, b, c, d strings are written at once by the right syscall, like this. The previous function tracing features are for the native functions, but how about uh, programs written by JIT compiled languages such like Java and uh, JavaScript? It's, pos it's impossible to get similar mapping information about them using uh, just the only uh, ERF tables or uh, dwarf. But if the target test provides guider with JIT compiled similar others mapping information, and JIT compiled function calls uh, follow uh, first call convention, it's possible to trace them. Uh, Java and Node.js can export uh, similar other snapping table using external file at runtime. Then Guider can trace their JIT compiled function calls after importing their uh, mapping table. Yeah, like this. Uh, this is a tracing example about Node.js. As shown in the picture, uh, there are JIT symbols in red boxes and native symbols outside. Function filtering for JIT symbols is also supported. Next tracing feature is about Python function. Python function tracing is started by py trace command. It, uh, the command will print all Python method calls. As shown in the picture, uh, Python call stacks are printed in real time at various depths depending on the stack frame. File pass and line number uh, uh, for the each function are also printed together. The uh, target was IOTA program that written in Python and prints IOUCs in real time. Call commands used in uh, previous native function tracing are also available for uh, this picture. This picture. Next tracing feature is for syscall. Syscall tracing is started by uh, strace command, uh, similar to uh, original Linux command. The command will print all syscalls and their arguments converted into uh, an easy to understand format. As shown in the picture, syscalls are printed with backtrace, or return value, uh, elapsed time in real time. Syscall commands used in previous native function tracing are also available for this feature. Next feature uh, is for signal. Signal tracing is started by sigtrace command. Uh, the command will print all received signals for the target task. In addition, the cause of the signal generation and uh, the sender can be also printed when receiving segmentation for child test, child signals. As shown in the picture, received signals are printed for target stress in real time, and those threads were terminated because of segmentation fault caused by wrong memory access. Backtrace option and signal filter option are also available for this feature. Using backtrace, you can analyze which function is being executed when the target task received signals. This feature is useful when monitoring multiple threads to analyze abnormal termination between uh, as segmentation fault. Last tracing feature is in this term is for IO. IO tracing means uh, analyze which test performed which operations on which files on uh, which devices and at what size. 
and it's not only for specific tasks, but also all tasks, whole system. So it must be possible to collect all system I/O events, including various metadata such like task, device, uh, I note, or code information. So uh, uh, the I/O tracing consists of three steps: first, recording all system I/O events; and second, processing recorded data, uh, uh, including conversion; last, summarizing and reporting measured. In the command line. IO rec command is for recording system IO events into a specific file. Uh, report command is for processing data and reporting to a specific output file. As shown in the picture, uh, first report information is about task workload. In the red box on the right side of the picture, block workloads are shown with elapsed time for read and write size and in uh, megabyte operation count fields for each task uh, not only workload but also elapsed time is printed it's very useful to analyze delay caused by uh, io system widely the cached io is uh, excluded in those tests because this is about actual block operation so some operations using page caches are not measurable. Uh, next report information in IO tracing is about device workload by size. In the red box on the picture, it shows the, uh, the workload of, the, of each device for the read operation of all tasks and the proportion about uh, sequential operation. Most read operations are consist of 4K workload in the uh, blue box on the picture. About 57% uh, of operations were sequential. In other hand, in other words, uh, about 43% of operations were random IO. This information is useful when optimizing device workload, including kernel reader hand. Of course, not only total workload, but also per task workload is also shown at the bottom of the picture. Next report information in IO tracing is about file workload. In the red box on the picture, it shows the workload of each file for the write operation of all tasks. Most write operations, about uh, 100 megabytes, are performed into the test file. Actually, uh, it's all about the guide thread using IO test command. This information is useful when tracing or uh, analyzing task workload or file workload. Yeah, this is very nice. Next, next report information in IO tracing is about file operations. Uh, as shown in the picture, all the file operations are displayed, including time, task, offset, size, and path. The total file size is also appended to the, uh, the end of path in each line. In detailed information, uh, but analyzing is a little bit difficult. Yeah, so let me show demo finally. Yeah, first of all, uh, let's install Guider using uh, PIP. Then check version. And check comments using a uh, help comment. Yeah, there are many comments supported with various OSs. So if you uh, use H option with any comment, options and examples for each comment will be shown. 
it's very specific uh, data. So let's execute the yes program. It just prints the input string repeatedly. Then, uh, uh, yeah, like this. And then executing background with the redirection. Like this. Okay, then let's monitor system resources with the top command. Yeah. As you can see, uh, yes, process is using CPU much, and it is running on this core now. Yeah, there are many other uh, states as shown in real time. And next, let's profile system and tasks for uh, ten seconds with the top command. Yeah, and next, open the output file. Guider.out. There is system information on the top of the file, like this. And system resource uses in each interval for 10 seconds. And CPU uh, usages for the whole system and uh, specific processes, including yes, is shown like this. In addition, virtual memory, uh, physical memory, uh, memory details are also shown. Uh, this is about detailed states for each interval, like this, detailed statistics. Uh, let's monitor this course with course text. Only write this course uh, are being used uh, in yes program. Yeah, look at this. And this is the usual level uh, course text calling the write this course. So, yeah. Next, let's monitor functions using CPU by sampling techniques with utop command. It looks similar to uh, previous syscall course text, but it's about uh, all user level uh, function calls.
Uh, next one is uh, about uh, this core tracing with argument and cross text. Yeah, this is write this course and its arguments and return value and a lapse of time. And uh, next, let's trace uh, function with arguments and cross text. Yeah. Read memory value pointed by first argument for the right function. Uh, let's check. Yeah, like this. This is uh, the address and the value is shown like this for uh, uh, memory value pointed by first argument for the right function call. This is about call command. Yeah, next feature is uh, visualization. This is a performance graph showing system resource uses of a CPU, uh, memory, uh, IO. This part shows CPU usage for uh, whole system and processes. And uh, this is about total CPU and uh, CPU uses for other processes. And yeah, this is labels for each grep. And this part is about uh, IO, but there is no grep because profiling options were not enough. And this part shows memory uses for whole system. Yeah, this is about uh, eight. Yeah, next one is timestamp chart uh, showing scheduling time slices for all tasks. Each number line shown on the left is the CPU core number and time slices of running tasks in each core are also shown. If you move the mouse pointer over a specific time slice, information about task event and time is printed. Some time slices are here. Yeah. Let's keep it. Last one is frame graph for the call stacks. If you click uh, a specific function box, zoom in is performed. And mouse moving to specific uh, slots, you can check detailed information. Searching is also supported with regular expression. Okay. So this is my talk. Thank you for your uh, listening. And if you have any questions, uh, please 
let me know it. Uh, this is the channel for communication with me. So uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.